Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the slider class. Slider class is a type of component that uh, you can use to control uh, just about anything in your audio app or plugin. And this is a good place for us to start because this is one of the bread and butter uh, objects that you will need to use when creating any sort of Juice app or plugin. So let's go ahead and create a new project and I will just call this test project. For now, I'm just going to make this a UI app because we aren't going to be producing sound today. I will just save this to the desktop. And now we have our source files, our main component and our main. And then we're just going to save and open this in our IDE. So if you've been checking out the previous Juice tutorials, you'll see that we were talking about the component class and how this is the base class for just about anything visual that you see in Juice. And the slider class, if we just go to our Juice API and we will put a link to the actual documentation uh, in the description. And if I just search for slider, we will find our slider class. And I prefer to do this because this is a great way just to show people that are just getting started uh, how everything kind of works from the ground up. So what we could do is we could see that looking up here at our inheritance diagram that slider inherits from the component class. So we covered what the component class does in our last two tutorials. And so essentially what that means is that anything that a slider can do, a component can do, okay? Because a slider is a type of component, okay? And so now what we're going to do is we're going to start creating a slider. So what we'll do is we'll just go into our private section of our main component class, and we can just declare a slider by uh, using the juice namespace and just calling it juice slider and I'll just call this slider one. So now if we take a look here, we see that we have three different types of constructors that we can call on uh, when we actually create this slider. Okay, so we can call a constructor where we don't give it any sort of arguments. We can give it a component name if we wish to refer to it later. Uh, we could also give the slider a slider style, and I'll show you more about that in a moment, and the text box entry position when we actually create the slider itself. So we'll actually walk through that a little bit later in this tutorial. So going over to our main component constructor, and we want to uh, start thinking about some of the things that we want to do with this slider. So for instance, uh, there are different slider styles. So we have rotary sliders, we have linear sliders, uh, and there are a couple different types of sliders that we can create. Uh, we also would like to think about what type of range that we'd want the slider to have. So the slider would need to have some sort of beginning value, some sort of end value. Uh, and we could also give it a default value where we actually say where we want the slider to start upon startup. So the natural place for us to actually give the slider these values would be in the main component class uh, in the constructor uh, because the constructor calls when the app is first initialized. So when you first uh, hit the button to actually create the app, that calls the constructor and the constructor just sets up everything for you. And that constructor only gets called once. So we don't need to create the slider again and again. We only need to create the slider once and it'll be there for us um, throughout the uh, lifetime of the application. So now what we could do is we can call on some of the methods and we will see that uh, there are various methods that we can call here. So we can see that we have set slider style. We can uh, set the rotary parameters. There's actually loads. Uh, there are loads of methods that you can call on here. And 
So I'll just show you a couple of the basic ones here. So the first one, as I was saying before, is setting the slider style. So we've got slider one, and then we can call set slider style. We see that this takes a slider style object. So many times, I know when I was first starting out with using Juice, I thought slider style, I don't know what that means. Okay, so sometimes what you can do is you can go back to the Juice API. I'm not sure if it's in here because it's it's part of the slider uh, it's part of the slider class. So if we scroll all the way back up, we see that we have this enum called slider style. So we see that we have linear horizontal style, linear vertical, and so on and so forth. So this tells you what sort of slider style that you want to use. So what we'll do is we will just call this a linear horizontal slider. So once again, we, for any juice objects, we need to use the juice namespace. And then we have juice and this, this class called slider style is within the slider class. So we've got juice, slider, then slider style. And we will just make this a linear horizontal slider. Okay, so for people that are just starting off, this may look a little bit daunting. Okay, so let's just walk through that. So this is a juice object. So we need to uh, we need to precede any juice objects with the juice namespace that lets it know, hey, we want to instantiate a something that's within uh, the juice API. And then the next thing is slider because we're doing a uh, we're going into the slider class, and then we're going into slider style. And slider style is within slider, so we'll show you how that works here. So we have class slider, and then we have the enum slider style that is within the slider class. Okay, and then within that you have these different enums, and this one is linear horizontal. Okay, and I'll show you that in code really quick as well. So if we command click on Mac and then go to jump to definition, we'll see this in code. Okay, and I know that some people that are a little bit more experienced, they know these things, but uh, this is these are things that took me so long to actually figure out myself. So, uh, so I'm going to go through them. So we see that we have this class it's called slider, and then within slider, we have this enum. Oop. Don't want to don't want to do that. Uh, we have the enum called slider style, and then we have all of these values. Okay, so it's good to get to know how to actually read uh, the, read through the code base as you uh, as you're doing this. Okay, so that's how we're coming up to that uh, that line of code. So now we have slider one, and we can set a range. And here we have a minimum, so we'll just make the minimum 0 0.1. I can make sure that this stays as a float by putting a little F there. And I can make the maximum 1.0. I'll put an F there. I'll make the minimum 0. Uh, one thing that you'll notice here is if we command click into set range, what we'll see is that actually it'll probably be easier if... I show you in here. So set range. What we see here is that uh, we can do uh, we can call set range with a minimum, a maximum, and we see here that there's an optional third argument, and this is something that's helpful for a lot of people. Uh, where when you see this equals zero as uh, as an argument, what that means is that that is optional. So I can just leave it with the double, the uh, new minimum, the new maximum, and just leave it at that. Or I could give it an interval. And an interval is when you're increasing or decreasing the slider, uh, how much are you actually um, increasing or decreasing by? So in this particular in this particular situation, it'd probably be good for us to do uh, in increments of 0.1. Okay, so if you don't do that, then what will happen is when you get your slider range, it'll actually um, have four or five decimal places. Uh, it'll have four or five 
uh, digits to the right of the decimal place. And uh, a lot of people don't want that. They just want to say, okay, 1.1, 1.2, you know, so on and so forth. Another thing that we could do is we can, uh, there's a text box uh, that we can, where it actually displays the value and we can decide where we want the text box to be. So I can say slider one, uh, set text box style. And what we could do is once again, this is a, this is part of the slider class. So we do juice slider text box, and you can actually go uh, directly to this. We'll do text box below. Okay, so we'll put the display of the value below the actual slider. You can make it uh, read only, or you can make it where you can actually click in and actually modify the value, actually type in the value. We'll just make it read only for now. So that'll be true. Then here we will set the uh, box entry width in pixels. So we'll make this, let's say, 50 pixels uh, wide, and we'll make it 25 pixels high. So we've set this, we've set the slider style, we've set the text box style, we've set the range. Now we might want to give it a default value to start off with. So we can say slider one, set value, and we can enter the value that we want this to default with when it starts. So we'll put this at 0 0.5. And the last thing that we want to do is since slider is a type of component, we need to actually add it and make it visible to the parent component. Okay. So think of the parent component, uh, this main component that we're in right now, this is the kind of the canvas. And so we need to actually add the slider to the canvas. So we do that using the command add and make visible, which is a component method. And now we just put slider one in there. Okay. Uh, now we'll go down to our paint method here. We'll just get rid of all this stuff and we'll do a, we'll just make the screen black. So once again, juice colors black. And now all we need to do is we need to set the actual slider on the canvas, which is our main component. So we could do that using the set bounds method. And what I will do is I'll try to put this in the middle of the screen. So let's, let's do get width divided by two minus, uh, let's see. 300, no, actually let's do 200. Okay, and then get height divided by two minus 100, and we'll make the width 400 and the height 200. So this should pop up in the middle of the screen. And so we will try to build now and hopefully we'll have a slider that will be on the screen. So while we're doing this, just wanted to remind you about the audio programmer community. So if you're looking to learn more stuff about code, uh, you have questions and want to connect with other, other audio developers, be sure to join our community over at the audio programmer dot com forward slash community and that will give you access to our discord server so here we go so here's our slider and we can see that it gave us a default value of 0 0.5 and we can go left and the minimum is zero and the maximum is 1.0 okay so that's that's what we'll do there and now what we could do is we can actually change this slider style so let's do rotary horizontal vertical drag. Okay, that's another one that's quite popular. And we will build again. And we will see that we will have a rotary slider now. And once again, default value is 0 0.5. And it goes from 0 to 1. Okay, And that's really how you do it. 
so those are the basics. So for now, we're just showing the basics. Let me show you one more thing. Let me take off this third optional argument here and let's just build that again. And you'll see that the uh, actual display of the slider is now 0 0.5000 and it has a little dot, dot, dot to show you it continues on. And see here that we have uh, more uh, granularity in our decimal places. Okay, so uh, so you can see that um, that we've used that third argument to actually kind of truncate the values to point uh, to point one. So that's really it for this tutorial. So once again, this is just the basics. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it was helpful for you. Be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you found it helpful. And I will see you next time.